and and uh, I was around at my mum's, and she got it. I thought, oh, that's an interesting guy. That's in it. And there was this article about uh, finding a Bronze Age ads near Penrith. Oh yes, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. and I thought an ads. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Claire finds a chisel, a Bronze Age chisel. Now they find an ads. There's some really strange bits of Bronze Age sort of metalwork coming out of this area. Was that near Penrith? Yes, I think it was near Penrith, oh, there's yeah. There's a lot of stuff up there, and we're going to have to go and have a look. You know, weirdly enough, somebody brought... I, I sold a book the other day to somebody in Cockermouth. Did you? They're a bit, they're a bit funny up there. Yeah, well, that, that, well that, that was my reaction. They, they, they are very strange in Cockermouth. Um, that, that's really thrown you all now, haven't it? Right, so any... any um, any anything anyone else uh, right okay was, is that all your news andy mm -hmm. and you've got no news about claire this week um no um well i, th I think i think that's the first ever to be honest <laughs> she did come running down the beach to shout at somebody but i'd already beaten her to it oh the tide, was... Tide, tide was coming in and somebody was out there paddling with their kids uh, oh dear but she was going no 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 don't do it yeah it turned out to be a local who should have known better oh. thought he'd got an hour spare and <laughs> and his mum morning, worse. morning mm. to say thank you oh i i don't understand why people don't understand about tides oh he totally understands it he's a farmer he's pulled sheep out all the time he just thought he, he got his times wrong completely oh, wrong right. wasn't even looking when i pointed he looked round and immediately saw it the tide was coming round the corner, oh. uh, and legged it. Oh well, that's fair enough, isn't it? You mm. know what I mean? You know, it's 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 life. Amazing oh. me the people who go out on Sully Island, mm. and uh, then the tide comes in, and oh, I'm stranded! I'm stranded! Someone yeah. send the lifeboat for me, please. Yeah, they don't realise the tide's going to go back out again. Yeah. You know, do you know, do you know, Peter. I, I've organised many walks on uh, Sully Island, and uh, and it's always been that we make sure. And I, and I can remember going on. So it's a, it for those who don't know Sully Island. It, it's um, it's it's an island that um is environed by waters, um, and it's you can walk out there four hours um each tide. Isn't that right, Peter? Or is it yeah. five? Anyway, anyway, the point is, I gave this walk one day, and I was quite happy. Everyone was off the island. I stood there as the water broke, and then suddenly these people ran to get over to Sully Island, and they were playing in that spot, mm. and, and the race of water, and I'm thinking, I can't deal with this, and then they went over to the said, oh, my God, we're trapped. I thought, you fools. Yeah. yeah. I'm taking yeah. my grandsons over there fishing, and we fished the tide in and fished it back out again. That's the way you do it, Pete. Yeah. But, you, but know, you, you know, you know we the tight. We had, you know, we had the naturist walk across the bay a few weeks ago, Andy. Yeah. Did the guy was the guide naked as well, or was he fully clothed? No, he said he wouldn't do it. Oh, did he? I didn't go with him to see, but he said he wouldn't. Oh. <laughs> he does wear shorts if that counts. <laughs> so he was the I woke one up out then on that account. I knew his feet. I'd slapped in the sands. I came home from sea. I was on leave. My mum and dad, they were uh, renting a house up on Slapton Sands and had a private footpath down onto the this, this private beach. And, of course, I'd gone down there. I'd been in for a swim and I was back laying on the sand, going to sleep. I woke up and I'm surrounded by nudists. <laughs> <laughs> gone to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that wasn't that. <laughs> oh, no, that's disappointing, isn't it? <laughs> there wasn't, no. Mm. Bloodhound's uh, ears brings to mind. Yeah. By talking, Claire, you know that time we went to the nudist beach and did, shall I tell everyone? Oh, go on. What? Go on, Claire. No, she's not saying anything. Any news for you, Claire? <laughs> Have you noticed she's got a four-poster bed there? Yeah. Queen size. What's that? Queen. Queen. Size, queen size, yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, I'm moving on. Uh, Anne, any news? It's good to see you this week, Claire. Any news from you, Anne? No, not at all. Sorry. Oh God, we'll eventually get through this, Dave. No, <laughs> sorry. 
And there's only one witch left. Is it Jessica or Margaret? <clears throat> I read about um, Canterbury Cathedral's uh, stained glass windows being the oldest in Britain. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, it, was on the, yeah. it, it was um, on the telly, I think, wasn't it? That's right. It was on the news, wasn't it? it was mm. 900 years old, are they? they yeah, know. 900. I thought it was bombed. It was no, that, that was really badly it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, we'll, well, yeah, we'll leave that one, Pete. Anyway, they're, they're saying it. They're saying it. It's over 800 years old anyway. Yeah, mm. they took them out in the war. Did they? Oh, right. Yeah, they took them oh. out of most of the cathedrals in the war to save them, oh, but the, right. the, the valuable ones. Mm. I fainted in Coventry Cathedral once. They had to carry me out and give me brandy to Ooh. revive me. So, you get brandy? Uh, no, you were just, you were faking <laughs> it just to get the brandy. <laughs> a bit better than Very embarrassing. <laughs> I don't even know what's going on because I really don't. Right, okay. Um, le anyway, let's get started. Let let's get uh, straight into it. And um, right, okay. Um, right, let's let let let's do that. Now, before we get in, well, we are into it anyway. So, uh, so today we are going to be looking at the reuse of material from the Roman period in the early medieval and medieval period. So we sort of the reuse of material for buildings. Now I've got a select small number where you suddenly start to see, oh my God, that, that's Roman material being reused. And, um, and it, it, it takes me back to Andy and, the, and Claire looking for reused Roman material at a certain cathedral up along Hadrian's Wall. Um, however, I thought we'll have a look at some more impressive stuff than that. So anyway, let's get straight to it. So uh, let's start screen sharing. The, the one the one magic of material being reused and recycled in Britain, we, we, there are reports of stone carved sarcophaga, sarcophagi being reused as horses troughs. Uh, um, so you know that that's one example. We see that other other example of Roman material being reused is, for example, Roman lead slag heaps. They go back to them and they recycle uh, the slag to um, to sort of refine it a little bit better. There's another example. We we start to look at lots of buildings. Um, that walls and and uh, other structures, such as a Thamia wall, which is part of the bathhouse in Leicester, we see that sort of being reused within the center of the city of Leicester. So there are lots of examples of Roman material being reused. Um, and that's where we're going. Now, this is a rather interesting one. So what I did, I, I typed into the internet earlier on, um, and I typed in Roman sarcophagus used as a horse horse trough. Um, and this is actually an example that was used as a, 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 to plant flowers. This is this is this is a great example of um, sarcophagi being reused um, in a garden, in a stately home. And what we do find is that one by one. We do see that these secrets are being revealed. Now, I can remember a great Time Team episode, and I think they were at a stately home, and, and they were debating whether the stone-cut sarcophagi um, had been used um, on this estate to keep water and to keep the, uh, the horses and the um, cows refreshed over the summer months. So again, a couple more examples, but what I want to go, this, this is this is a very odd example, to be honest with you. Um, and this this was this was found by absolute accident, and it turned out to go for auction, I think, at Sotheby's. And the beautiful carvings here, um, and it went for an auction and it went for about 350000 pounds So but these are not really the examples I want to look at today. I want to look at something something more mundane, the things that we take take for granted. And I can remember 
years and years ago. And what, what I actually realized is that um, when Jessica um, kindly stepped in to do the York event for us, when uh, there, there was a certain street that was on the um, south side of uh, the River Fosse in York. And um, I, I remember that um, there was an alignment of stone and that stone itself um, turned out to be part of a Roman wall. So, and an amazing thing is, I've got an, um, an image of it, but my link with a cer certain guy who hangs around with Claire uh, was when I was excavating at Kaiawent. I was excavating a Roman wall that had been taken as a modern wall associated with the public house in Kaiawent, only to find out there had been a Roman wall under the eyes of the archaeologists for many years. So I actually uh, was the one who um, who uh, declared this is a Roman wall, and I was the one who did some of the work on it and so on. So these things are sort of um, out of sight, the elephant in the room, um, and they are there, lots of Roman little things around. And I, 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 I've come across other... Ex one of the one of the most frustrating things with the Roman period is everything's Roman. There's a Roman road down there. Oh, by the way, the church over there. There's a the, the boundary wall of the church is this Roman and oh, look at that stone over there. The 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 altar is actually part of a Roman temple. And I tell you what, you, you get you get a bit sick of this after a while. When when I when I come out with my latest book on the Romans in South Wales. One of the things I was coming across was that lots of people were reporting, oh, by the way, there's a Roman road over there and there's another Roman road. And by the way, over there, there's a Roman road. And I'm thinking, no, 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 no. So when I, when I, when I was thinking about today, I, I just thought one thing I wanted to very, very much to do is to basically sort of indicate where you can find some nice little bits of Roman wall. Uh, that is actually being used in a later context. So Hadrian's Wall we're not doing today because most of Hadrian's Wall um, has was just abandoned. Um, but in in London itself, Londinium, the great Roman capital of uh, Britain, well the southern Roman capital because Barak and York was the northern capital of uh, Roman Britain. In London, lots of the bits of Roman wall were actually um, reused for the defences of the early medieval and then the, um, the Anglo-Saxon and then you, you've got the Norman uh, period in London. And the, wall, the Roman walls were continually used. Uh, they were reused and recycled. They were used. They weren't abandoned and forgotten about. They were reused continually actually for the purpose that they were originally set out to be. So those are some of the examples that we'll be looking at. Um, we do we do know in many places that you come across bits of Roman wall that have been recycled from other buildings, which are just down the road. We'll come across one or two of the, those examples as well. We could go on all night here. Um, and we do actually mention Cardiff as well, but that's an example that we'll do actually after the break. So I'm, I'm very aware that I've got this weird noise in my ears and I'm just going to try and get my headphones sorted a minute. Hang on a minute. Um, hang on, I'm just going to uh, just do that. Um, nope. I'm just getting, I'm just going to turn, I'm just going to turn this down a little bit. Hang on a minute. Yeah, that's better. Right, that's a lot better. So the first place we can actually go to is actually just down the road from me, actually down the road from me and Pete. It's a place known as Killian. Um, but before we mention Killian, so there's Killian. Before we mention Killian, I'd, I'd like to mention this. Now, we're, we're going to do this. I'm talking about the reuse of material in the early medieval period and the medieval period. These, this is... You, you can obviously clearly tell that these these pillars here um, are actually from a Roman site, mm -hmm. and these are actually from the Roman Forum at um, Viraconium, Roxeter. 
And it's another story as well. I can remember that there was a Time Team episode and there was, um, I can't remember which building it was, but they, something like Corbridge or something like that. Like that. Anyway, they, they, they had a Time Team episode and they, um, and I can remember that they went into this pub and they stopped outside and they said, hang on a minute, these two pillars outside the pub are actually Roman columns. And they said, they're not, and they said, they're Roman columns. I just thought, wow. And they just discovered those Roman columns at the entranceway of the pub as they went in. So again, reuse of material from the Ro from the Roman period into the uh, medieval period. But these these themselves are rather interesting, and we're going to look a lot of we're going to look a little bit more detail about this. But I can remember, and, and none of you were on this trip, but I can remember that um, Chris and it was Bill and about five or six others. They they all went for a trip to uh, Roxeter. And one of our members from actually Lantwerp Major, she said, um, she said, we'll go to Roxeter and then we'll go to the church. And I said to Chris, well, why, why are you all going to the church? And, and, and then Jan said, she said, actually, you come to the church and I'll show you something very special. And what was very special was these two Roman columns, the base plinth and the two capitals. And these were reused. And I think that was great because then they went into the church graveyard. And if you can make out the stones on either side of that entranceway are all different colors and it's all recycled stone from the Roman site. However, these two columns are, are used specifically the reuse of building material as an, an entranceway, um, a sort of um, Lichard gate type thing into the church graveyard. Uh, and we'll, we'll look at a little bit more detail about this. So where, where are we at so far? So we've got Viraconium there on the little map. We do that. Um, and I mentioned that if we draw on the little bit of a plan so we know exactly where we are. So get my little annotation bar in there. So there'll be a lot of, lots of pointy arrows on this one today. Um, so we're going to go to there. Uh, Isca Silurum. We mentioned that site, uh, which is here, which is Kaya Went, but we're not going to go there today. So we're going to look at Viraconium, which is there. We know of York. And we also mentioned something called the Lincoln Gate, uh, the Newport Gate in Lincoln. We go to Colchester and we go to London as well. And we go to one or two other locations. And I have mentioned Leicester. Ratea, Ratea, which means a place of the common rat. No comments. And we've also mentioned Canterbury as well. But after the break, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to Dover. Uh, we're going to spend a little bit of time in Dover as well. And we will mention Porchester as well. But what I don't want to do is actually look at Roman remains that are everywhere. I want to look at sort of specifics of them, of, of like reuse. Um, to create something very special. If, and again, the context is, if it wasn't for the Romans, those things wouldn't have been built. Yeah? So I think that that's, that that's the tagline of what I'm doing today. So let's sort of clear that. Let's get away all that. And what we'll do, we're going to move on. Next, we're going to, this, this is where we're going to go now. I mentioned Killian on the little plan there. And <clears throat> Killian is one of those places that I I fell in love with when I was a child. And in many ways, when I go to Killian, I'm, I'm almost as if I'm there the first time I went there. And <coughs> it, all, it all comes flooding back. And, um, and one, one, thing, one, thing I, one thing I didn't realize is a certain structure that we're going to see, right? So let's try and, let's again, try and put this into context. Try and eke into what I'm doing. This, this isn't a Roman lecture per se. This is real reuse. Now, so what we're going to do, you've got the, you've got the amphitheater, which I've mentioned in a few lectures in the past. Um, and when I've mentioned the amphitheater in the past, I've mentioned about the amphitheater being reused in the early medieval period, I've mentioned that, you know, it could have been the place of King Arthur's round table. It could have been the place of where a court was held and all the rest of it. However, 
that's that's not for me today. And the reason why it's not for me today is when it was all when all the archaeology was scooped out in the 1925, 1926 by Sir Mortimer Wheeler, they completely ignored the specific reuse of Roman material in an early medieval medieval context. So what we're going to do? We're not going to do that. Also, if you go to Killian, what you do see is the remains of some of the baroque houses. Guess what? They weren't reused in the early medieval period and the medieval period. So we're not going to do that. But I could mention, for example, that over over around here is actually is, is actually Killian Castle that was constructed in a Norman period. What we do know is that they demolished the uh, bathhouse, which is approximately here. Um, and they moved all the bathhouse material to over here to create a mound. But we're not going to do that either because it's all covered up with earth. So that's an, that is definitely a no-no. But where we are going to go is we're going to go to approximately the location of where the Roman bridge was. And today that is occupied by something known as the Hanbury Arms. It's a very interesting building because the Hanbury Arms has a certain structure that was could have only have been constructed with the assistance of all the great Roman material that was left after Killian was abandoned by the Romans and by the Norman period. The Norman, the Normans were very much the uh, the, the the destructors of lots of Roman heritage in Britain. And what I mean by that is that there was a writer known as Geoffrey of Monmouth in 1136. And he wrote, he wrote about the, the vaulting walls, the, 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 the vaulting arcades of the Roman bath house, which is where that green tick is there in the middle of the, uh, the Roman fortress at Caelian. And that was all demolished to build to build the mound associated with <clears throat> the um, Norman keep. And you just think that if you dug that Norman keep out, you would have all the material to actually um, build the Roman bath house complex today. So, again, if we if we sort of clear that and we sort of go to that and we go move on. So we know that that there, that crossing there and it's called the Hanbury Arms. Now. Nice little image. I do believe this sort of is it, it. It speaks at 1920s to me. I'd like to say earlier, but I'm thinking about 1920s. That image was taken, um, and the building we're interested in is this structure. This is the Hanbury Arms, and the Hanbury Arms was constructed utilizing Roman material. But this this building here is the one that I'm really interested in. Now I, I can remember I had. A trip to Killian. I've, I've had a couple of trips to Killian actually, and I think Pete may have been on this one. I'm not, I'm not sure. And, and we went down to Hanbury Arms, and I basically said, "Look at this," and they said, "It's, it's a tower." And I said, "What's it made out of?" A bit by bit, you picked out bits of Roman dress stone, <coughs> and lots of Roman tile, and oh, that's why we've come here. And again. It's, it's that idea of reuse and recycling, which is so obvious that it's Roman material. That's what I wanted to do. Again, next next week, we're looking at the reuse of Anglo-Saxon material in a in the medieval period. So that, that's what we're going to do next week. Uh, not next week, the following week, because next week we're, we're going international again. So again, what we need to do, we need to sort of move on a little bit and sort of try and get some more modern images. And there it is. But we actually look at the bottom bit. And it's likely that 90% of the material in this tower was actually from the Roman fortress itself, constructed from the walls. Now, the, the, walls, the walls of the fortress are very close by, very, very close by. And even though the crossing over the, the river is um, over over the river itself is is probably more or less where this building is. The 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 stone substructure of the 
bridge hasn't actually been found and it might be because yeah. most of it was reused um in in this tower obviously lots more roman brick are down below and 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 spot spot the roman bricks right on there there and what you do see is lots of dress stone and you, what you do see is lots of different colored stones <clears throat> and this this what this what this tells me is 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 twofold that this this wasn't from one quarry. This this wasn't quarried for the tower. This didn't come from down the road. We're going to just quarry a load of material. This is just recycled material. And then they would just render over it and just whitewash it, like the rest of the Hanbury Arms itself. So we've got a medieval structure, the Hanbury Arms, which um, and there's this tower, which would be associated with the defences of the, the, the castellated site of Killian itself. And what we do find is that when the Normans came to Britain, it was very useful to capture these types of locations, Roman fortresses. And when you capture a Roman fortress, you've got, you've got building material. And to build your mound, you've got the outlines of walls still standing and still functional in, in many places like Dover and Cardiff and Killian. And lots of other places as well. So that's the best place to build build a, a Norman fortification because you're protected within the old Roman walls that were last used 600 years earlier to actually build your new defences. And th this is this is what we do see with this type of building, utilising what's around you. So again, let's sort of move on. We don't want that cross there. Let's sort of move on a little bit and again you can you can pro probably see the muds there this would have been the, quite an amazing crossing and interesting enough it's probably very likely that people didn't know that this was built roman building material because it had been rendered and whitewashed over so nobody really spoke about it and somewhere maybe around here is where the bridge is and the, the <coughs> gateway itself, the gate, the gateway of the fortress itself is way over behind this building, behind this building, and it's marked on the road gateway. Um, and then you would have had, you know, this area, the fort, this area outside the fortress, and then there would have been a crossing over the river itself. Again, it's, it's that sort of subtlety of reuse. And there it is. Now, what, what you can clearly see, and it's starting to get a little bit more obvious, a lot more obvious. And so we sort of zoom in and zoom in and zoom in. So what you can see is that this, this, this architecture is undoubtedly a Roman architecture that's been taken from probably the bathhouse. And what you do find is all these bits of brick, for example, They've actually been reused. There's, there's lots of them all over the place. There you go. I'm starting to spot them a lot better now. All, all of these actually rebuilt Roman brick. And then the dress stone is just taken willy nilly from collapsed walls and demolished buildings. And one thing that's very, very frustrating for me, looking back on it, is that when you when you look at Roman towns and cities, the 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 material itself the material itself that is lying around they're still standing for the roman period is then frustratingly demolished by the normans why, why would that be frustrating sure it is frustrating because what we do see on the continent for example at places like nîmes um in france and you think of um even play, oh, go to Greece, you look at Athens and you look at Rome um, and, in, and, you, and you look all, and, and even here in, in, in Germany itself, where, where you've got all these Roman buildings standing up and they're still standing and, 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 and they're, they're beautiful and wow, you know, really, really nice structures. You don't get that in Britain. And it's, it's because it really is because there isn't there isn't a great deal of material around to be recycled. We're, uh, let, let, let's just try and explain that in a more um, sort of 
more academic way. When when the Romans when the Romans came over to Britain, there was no real tradition of building in stone. And before anyone shouts out and says Stonehenge, and before they shout out and say Avebury and 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 Scarabray, right? Let's stop, because in the Iron Age, by the Iron Age. You're not building those monuments. You're Stone, Stonehenge, by the time you get to the Iron Age, by the time you get to the year zero, 43 years before the Romans come over to Britain, most most of the buildings in the south, for example, um, are made of earth. Um, they, they don't have stone walls. They, they don't have, they, they're not utilizing Stonehenge anymore and Avery, right? Most, most of the buildings in the Iron Age are made of earth. They're soft buildings. Right. So when the Romans come over, you know, they're having to start again. They're able to quarry new materials in the north. It's slightly different. But they're, they're quarrying new materials. But in Europe, um, when people are moving into Roman towns, uh, into the early medieval period, into the five, six hundreds, and they're moving into those towns and in the medieval period, they, there's there's many years of material before the Romans of the um, structures that have been made of stone. So there's a longer tradition. So it's just this idea of reuse, really. And stone, stone has a really deep meaning um, when you're you building and using it. And I'm, I'm just going to say no more because that's going to spoil another site that I want us to look at. So then, so again, it's a great tower, but I would say um, most of that is, is totally reused building material. Again, that wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for the Roman fortress there. It's just obvious. Uh, and what's under those rendered whitewash walls? Leave that. Again, you can see clearly see that a lot more, a lot really big hotchpot. So if you if you're um, if you're out and you wanna you want to know, uh, and you, you could yeah, okay, we can spot the wally, we can spot the reused Roman roof tiles. Oh look look at look at uh, uh, re roof tiles, um, pennant sandstone roof tiles, and, and slate and all the rest of it. And, and interesting enough. Um, you can see a whole layer of roofing material. Yeah, you can see the line going through the wall. And then you've got the little bits of red brick, and you can see all these lines of reused material from the roofing material of the fortress. There'd be tons and tons of it. So I'll give you that string course through the walls. Um, and, and, and look at that there, you know, a nice stretchy old bit of Roman tile for it as well. Um, so let's, let's sort of go a little bit further on and say bingo nice so so suddenly we've gone from a reused building uh, material not reused building material uh, reused to build a building and then interesting enough you've got you've got this big friggin structure here right um and this is at viraconium roxeter now this is all this is all roman material and it was actually called the workhouse uh, um, for many years. And this this is a Roman wall. That this is part. This is a thamia. This is the big chunky wall that holds up the different, uh, the the main bit of the bathhouse complex. The the big structure that that's going to have all the arcades and all the big vaulting roof and all the rest of it. And then that's another lecture. And this is why you, you, you get some of the, the time time signs of arches and all the rest of it there. So this is this is a building that, that's per se being being utilized and, and continues to be utilized from the <laughs> Roman period, early medieval period, medieval period. And then it's then it becomes an archaeological site and it becomes a pride of joy for those of the old kingdom of Mercia, uh, Viraconium, Roxeter. It's known as the workhouse. But obviously, that's the sort of later name for it, and that that's that's the real point I was trying to make earlier on. I, I was trying to I was trying to make I was trying to make the point that you in, in on the continent you've got basically that you've got buildings and they just oh we'll just this you've got a Roman basilica we'll just convert it into a church you know uh, you've got a Roman wall we we'll just continue using it as a defensive wall. We got this big chunky wall at Vericonium. Let's sort of use it and turn it into stables and all the rest of it. That's the that's what I'm talking about. Not demolishing these things and taking the material from this locality to somewhere else. But then again, that's exactly what they did when uh, they they were um, working on the, the the church, taking away material from the city itself to work on 
the church at Viraconium, Roxeter, the, the, the early medieval church and the medieval church and so on. And that's where those columns come into it. So now, interesting enough, there's the church. And hang on a minute. There, right, there's the context. These columns here, uh, in fact, these columns that have been reused. Right, so we, 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 got, we go to the middle of the forum in Roxeter itself. And they're excavating and they're reusing these things for the construction of the church. Now, again, moving on and we're thinking, well, that, that, that's the other thing. Where did all the material go to? Well, it, just, it was just sold off. You know, you look at uh, Furness Abbey in uh, Cumbria and you, uh, and you look at it and you think, oh, wow, you know, they're really chunky walls. But where's the rest of it? You know, where's it all gone? There's loads of it missing, you know, and, 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 you, and you think, well, um, it's a really nice structure, but you blink and the rest of it's gone because it's, it's all reused to build the local village and the local town. And back in my mind, people would sell cartloads of material for, to people further on down to Barrow and Furnace and, you know, material would go elsewhere. And that's, that's, what, that's what was happening. Um, and it may... Here's, here's another thing that um, I wasn't going to mention, but I'm going to mention. I said we weren't going to mention much about Hadrian's Wall, but in the in the 1745-1746, there was the last Jac last major unsuccessful Jacobite uprising in Scotland. Uh, there were other minor attempts, but they they, they were uh, not really mentionable. But the, the major Jacobite rebellion, and what then happened is that. Um, the, the, the British government said, right, we're, we're, we're not going to have this happening again. Right. Those, those, those damnable Scots with their bloody kilts flailing around with their, um, we'll ban the kilt. That's what we'll do. But anyway, what they decided was that to deal with any future insurrection in Scotland, they're going to build roads. So what's in the way, what's between Carlisle and the Scottish border? Blow me Hadrian's Wall. And what's available in the in in the 1740s to build a road with? Wow, Hadrian's Wall! So this this is exactly what happened. It, it was Hadrian's Wall was being used um, extensively um, for building material for the roads for the roads to um, to stop any uh, future uh, insurrection in Scotland, so they could get the soldiers straight there. The one, of, one of the massive reasons why the Jacobite rebellion was so successful initially in the November and December and then the Jacobite army marched on to Carlisle and all the rest of it in York and so on and so on. And Bob's your uncle was was um, because the British army was trained to march on roads and uh, the Jacobites could walk on dirt tracks and all the rest of it. And it was fine. But the, 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 the modern British army needed roads to get, the, to get their wagons, their cannons up to the front line. And, and they, they, they were defeated a number of times by the Jacobite army because they just didn't have the infrastructure. It, it's, a bit like, uh, it, it, it's a bit like the Germans with Stalingrad. As soon as the Germans lost the, lost the link to get the supplies to Stalingrad, they couldn't get the thousands of tons of material into Stalingrad to keep the soldiers going. And this is why the Germans lost Stalingrad, because of logistics. So when you've got decent roads... You're able to deal with any insurrection. So Adrian's Wall was actively demolished to build those roadways into Scotland. But later on, slowly but surely, antiquarians stopped in, stopped and said, stop, 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 stop destroying this wall. It's a Roman wall. But at that point, it was too late because there's other quarries and, you know, the, 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 the wall itself has been quarried out enough and they've already moved further north. And let's, let's demolish a few other things that are in the way. So th this is this is what's going on, and, and it's likely that um, this is the thing to look out, folks. When when they're lifting up the road surfaces into Scotland, it's all, it's always sort of good to go along and sort of say, oh, there's a Roman stone there with a with a with a legionary number on it, or or a name, or there's a carved phallus on a stone or something. All these stones would have been reused. So again, I, I just, I, I just, I was intrigued. I, I just thought, how amazing, how amazing is this that you can go to different parts of Britain and you can just see these odd, weird anomalies and 
you're like, okay, close your eyes. And you think, oh, my God, look at those really old trees. And, oh, look at those really old Roman columns. Uh, and so it's not, it's not just the fabric of the church that at Roxeter, Viraconium, that you, that you can actually see the reuse of material in the foundations of the church and the porch and so on. It's these lovely, beautiful columns. Uh, and again, they, they, none of that matches, right? So you've got the, the base plinths there. That's probably from another, um, another wonderful um, structure associated with Viraconium Roxeter. Ask me how much of Viraconium Roxeter has been excavated and how many columns are still lying under the surface. I would say 90 85% of Roxeter hasn't been excavated. So there's going to be loads of these lying in the ground still. But it does make you wonder. It does make me wonder. It does make it, it does make me think and ask the question, why is it this why is it in in some parts of Roman Britain there's there's loads of, of, of Roman material. For example, Pete Pete will vouch me out the, on this. There's a lot of stuff still at Kaya Went. But Kaya Went isn't near a major city. Right? Um so it, the material is not going to be readily um, sold on. Killian, a bit further on down the road, is very near um, Newport. So you might be, and, and, and you've got access for the river. So material can be used from Killian to actually go to Newport and then be used in a construction of the castle. And it makes sense, doesn't it? It really, really makes sense that you've got Killian just a couple of miles up from Newport and you've got vessels that can use a navigable river. And you're just on the quayside. You can just pile stones up on, on on vessels and take them down to build the castle, which is also along the river as well. Sorry, we're back back to this little plan again. This it just pop, pops up a couple of times. Now, you know, I, I couldn't I couldn't find the image, but it, it's quite a famous one. I remember I remember that I, I was looking at a um, an old woodcut, and it had a beautiful. It said the, the Roman gateway in, in Exeter. And I thought, oh, wow, lovely, lovely, lovely. Only to be demolished 50 years later completely because they were widening the road. That, did, that didn't happen, for example, when you look at Lincoln. And again, when you look at York as well, you, 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 you glimpse at one or two of those gates and it says, oh, there's a little bit of Roman stuff there, yeah. And obviously reused in the medieval period, rebuilt and all the rest of it. So that, that's, that's all really great stuff. But in many places, other than Lincoln and other other than um, the Balkan Gate, which is in Colchester itself, um, most of our gateways have gone from Britain because we've just chosen to demolish them instead of preserving them as monuments. And in many ways, in many ways, we're some of the most heathen, um, barbaric people in regards to the history and archaeology of the whole of Europe. Uh, and I think it. I think, to be honest with you, it could be said we were more practical. I, I'm sure people will agree. If someone in Cornwall sees a useful stone lying around, let's use it. Let's not just leave it there. There's lots of stones in Cornwall lying around still today. So what I want to do is, is actually flow on from these, these two little, um, these two reuses of columns. And the worn away, it's all Roman, the worn away capitals, which would have had canthus leaves, uh, would have been extremely ornamentally carved. So the, these as a monument have consistently shown themselves for the best part of 1,900 years. That's a nice age for archaeology. And look at that strange church. Does that look bloody strange? Because... The reason why that looks strange, and you've got you've got all of those, you've got all the different colours in in texture and so on, is because what they've done, they said, well, it was a simple process, from the from the 1100s, 1200s, 13, 1400s to say, right, just go that, just go over there, right? There's a load of Roman material. We'll we'll use it in the construction of the church. Don't worry about it. We're going to be rendering over it and whitewashing it anyway, so don't worry. Nobody's going to know any difference. So, so you look. That this is a sure sign. This is a sure sign that. Now, I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you a little word of my wonderful wisdom, right? And um, and this is how you can talk. This is how you can go up against a true pro, right? If you um, 
if you come across a, a medieval church, this is this is a big rule of thumb. If you come across a medieval church and all the stonework is the same color all the way through, and somebody's standing in front of you and saying, This church itself is medieval, just say they're wrong. Because if it was medieval, they the the, the material would come from different quarries. And if it was a really old medieval church, like lots of the Anglo-Saxon ones, they would reuse earlier material from early buildings. That's how you can go up against an expert. Whenever you see a structure that's got the same stonework all the way through, you've got to be very suspicious. It's not old. Rule of thumb, you can say that 99%, that is the rule of thumb with any building in Britain from any period. The more differences in stone that you can see in the structure, the, the more the, the differences in the, the amount of quarries that that material would have actually come from. And then we come to a really good example in Northamptonshire, which one or two of you have seen before. But yes, we're going to visit there again. My Leicester University days, Bricksworth Church. Again, the reuse of material. And you can see that the soil level there, there's about two meters in depth, and there's still a lot to actually be found. And again, looking at the church as you go through the gateway, and bingo, we're in Colchester. Now, what we could do with Colchester, I could say, right, um, I could say Roman wall, re, Roman row, Roman wall, chest, um, Exeter, Roman wall, um, Chester Roman Wall, York Roman Wall. Oh, there's too many Roman walls that were reused um, in the medieval period. Loads of them, right? But so we, we'll look at one example, two examples actually, Cardiff, and we'll look at Col um, London, London. Um, but this is this is a this is a rather interesting one. This is this is actually Colchester. Now I'm going to ask Pete a question. Pete, did you actually go into the bowel? Did you go on a Colchester trip, Pete? Yes. Did you go into the bowels, or did you stay with me upstairs with Dirty Rog? I probably stayed with you. Yeah, we had a good look at the artifacts, didn't we? All we the... did. Yeah, we did. We did. We did. Unfortunately, Pete didn't go into the bowels. But the 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 one thing about Colchester Castle is it's it's built upon directly built upon and the the basement is actually roman so the the rectangular template of the structure is is very much ba based on the original structure of the roman temple built in memory of emperor claudius I was, I, I, my my two my two turkeys were fighting you know were were built in memory um, of Emperor Claudius, and not only built in memory of Emperor Claudius, but was built um, because Emperor Claudius was now a god. And this this was the temple that was burnt down by those who were supporters of the great Boudican revolt. Uh, but what what we're talking about in regards to the temple is actually all these lower layers. And what's happening is that lots of the upper layers are actually reusing Roman material. What you can see is bits of Roman tile, all bits of Roman stone all the way over this place. And again, what does this tell you? This is a bloody old building because it's, it's, it's a hodgepodge of reused material. That's why it's so old. Not only that it's reusing materials directly, the template is, is on the original Roman temple, and that becomes Colchester Castle, Colchester Prison. It become a ruin, and then it's Colchester Museum. And I think that's great to have continuity for, yes, actually, sweet as a note, nut, folks, they're, they're, this, this has been a site occupied and used and I'm sure when it was a ruin, a tramps lived in it. So we'll, we'll say continuous for the sake of argument. Right. It was abandoned as a prison, probably wasn't used for about 50, 60 years. But we'll forget about that. Right. So it was used for it nearly been used for 2000 years. 
So how many buildings in Britain have been continuously used for 2,000 years? Not many. And I'll, I'll probably probably find one or two, but not many at all. OK, so th this this is this is what's important about this site. And what, what's also important is that um, I, I actually actually one of the reasons why we went on the Colchester trip is because my um, my relatives used to live in the bushes around here. Marmalade Adams, uh, who, who was a gypsy relative of mine. But that's something else. So um, so what 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 is actually what what the thing is, is that we can um, we, we can see the. All this material here, uh, which is all associated with the Roman remains, and as as they as they're building the castle, guess what they're doing? They're thinking, they're thinking, oh God, what are we going to do with all these tiles? What are we going to do with them all? Right, there's loads of them. Look at these. There's layer after layer. Look at all them. We gotta do something with them. There's so many of them. So what? What they did? What they did? They 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 had so much Roman tile to use. They just they just can't count it. They used it for everything. They 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 used it for um, the window architecture. They they used it for the string courses. They used it all over the place. They used it for hardcore. And that tells you of the intensity of Roman civilization in Colchester. So when when the when a temple fell down and it was abandoned, and, and what what they then did, there was this template, and they just built it up, Roman material, just built it all up. Uh, and I'm sure that would have. I, I'm sure that uh, you can you can imagine, can't you? You can um, you can imagine a conversation. Um, uh, the, the, the first the first the, the first um, lord of Colchester in about um, eleven hundred. He said, "Hang on, do you know you said you could build a castle for me?" On top of the old temple site, yeah. Well, I didn't say you could build it out of absolutely everything. And I didn't want a colourful castle. I wanted a castle that actually looked decent. Look at it. You'll have to render over it and sort of whitewash the blemming thing. And that's exactly what they did. It's exactly what they did. Uh, and you, you can imagine, this, this, is, this is just what you would do. Definitely. Just... just Whitewash all the whole things. You've got the, you've got this sort of foundation, the Roman foundation stuff. Here. You've got the foundation stuff at the bottom. Then you've got the rebuild, all this sort of rebuild. It's all Roman. It, it can't can't get away from it. Oh, and actually, actually I've got to be honest with you. Um, you <laughs> look at that there. Um, look at all that. They run they run out of the dress stone. So you, you're talking right. We've got the dress stone from that old. Um, Sort of forum area, and then then all the stone then is is Roman tile. It's easy to shape. It's fine. It can do anything with it. And and again, any archaeological site, you get buckets um, and wheelbarrow loads of tile, just so much of it. And that is the Roman temple at Colchester. There it is. And, and you've got this this wonderful temple that was set alight, and then um, probably a little bit rebuilt, and then what you then find is here's the ground plan, right? So we'll have a look at this little bit of the ground plan in a minute, right? So that's what we'll do. Um, and again, this is this is that um, which is known as the Balkan Gate, um, of the Balkarine Gate, the Balkarine Gate um, in Colchester. So. This, interesting enough, this is near a pub as well. So uh, what you do find is that the the the, um, the the pub is over here, and you've got the other gateway, and you've got the pedestrian gateway, which is here, um, and then you've got the Roman wall. I, I mentioned about the Roman wall. So you've got uh, so you've got um, stone, you've got the uh, sort of string course, you've got the tile, you've got more stone, string course, uh, you've got all this year, loads of it, right? So the, the thing is, the thing is about Roman tile, it was a bit like our modern glass bottles. There was just so much of it. You just sort of re use it for rebuilding material. Um, and again, this this still stands there today. Absolutely brilliant. This this still stands there today. Um, and what you then have is you move on again and you go to this other little bit of a plan there. And, and all this here... The, this, this is actually the Roman basement of the temple itself. It's the Roman basement. Um, and 
there there was I, I think I yeah I can there, there's there's a little bit of a weird story uh, when they um when right w when when it was used as a medieval castle my I think I think what happened was that all of these cellars the Roman cellars the Roman basement was actually filled with sand right so that was fine it was left so year, years later we're thinking about the 1700s uh, when it had been used as a as a prison and about 1700 it was abandoned that this this local this local um this local guy he thought he, he broke into the cellars and he found out that they were all full of sand so he he, he took out the sand and then he realized that it was a sand that was all compressed that was actually keeping a castle up so the whole castle started to subside but the this is all this this is all the roman stuff and sort of the ground template all all the roman stuff um, as as it sort of creates that backdrop of the roman remains that is colchester castle uh, moving on and I just so what, what I think I'm going to do what I, what I am going to do now I'm going to I'm going to have a break, right? I just got to sort it out with my table, right? So we're going to I'm going to have a break. Uh, we, we'll do a little bit more about Colchester after the break as well, sort of put that into context. So let's let's see. Uh, are there any um, questionos? No. Nope. Claire's falling asleep. Well, look at her, silly girl. You've fallen asleep in there. Um, I don't know what to say. If she had a man with her, she may he may have kept her awake. I don't know. Um, Richard, ah, uh, not Richard, Pete. No, nothing for me. No. Okay. All good. Uh, what, oh, one what? thing. Yeah, go on. Um, when we were at uh, at Carleon, we were stood by the entrance to the museum, and you went off with Michelle and the girls to a Roman wall somewhere. Ah, yes. Yeah, we, we basically, we, uh, I, th I think Bill was with us as well. Bill and Kathy were with us, and, and we, we went through, oh, yeah, it, it was, we went through the park, and people were selling marijuana, smoking weed, <laughs> injecting cocaine. Um, they were all getting drunk. Um, and Michelle was panicking. Bill was sorting them out, I think. Kathy was giving them a mouthful. And then we eventually went through the park and we saw a nice little bit of a Roman gateway. Mm. Nice little bit of a Roman gateway within, within the course of the Roman wall. Yeah. Uh, one of those little little type of hidden gems. Then we had to go back through the park with security guards with us um, to actually oh, get yeah. to where you were. Yeah. What a palaver. <laughs> It's, it's what we should have called it. What we should have done. We we could have had other people going along, like Margaret. She could have had a bit of the dope smoking. I'm sure she did in her day. <laughs> uh, that could have been more of an attraction. Anyway, uh, Anne. No, no. Thank you very much. Looking forward to the next bit. Good. Um, and, and, and I'm always looking forward to the next bit. <laughs> Margaret, is that a new white sofa in the background with like a plastic covering on it? It's a, a mattress for a bed. I'm just waiting to get the room finished and then it'll go on the bed. Well, whatever you do, right, don't get Claire to stay at your place because you'll just fall asleep. Oh, well, I'll join her. <laughs> <laughs> I just wondered why they, uh, when the Ang, Ang, well, well, the Angles and the Saxons, that lot came over, uh, I presume they haven't been colonised by the Romans where they came from, so did they bring their own building methods with them and just revert back to timber well actually the interesting thing is they they, they the building methods that they brought with them were timber building but they used the timber building methods within re, re, within the stone building oh. so for for example um they they, they built they they reused roman material but they they used um carpentry methods to build it and a good example of that is stonehenge uh, when you when you look at the mortise and tenon and the tenon, tenon, tenon and groom techniques that they use at Stonehenge, um, Stonehenge was built by carpenters, not stonemasons. Yeah. So it's the same thing. 
Um, so that that's a really that's a really good interesting thing because Roman Roman structures in Britain were actually built by stonemasons. Yeah. Anglo-Saxon structures were built by carpenters. Yeah. And then by the time the Normans come over, they they've sort of got an idea of both carpentry and stonemasonry, but they weren't quite sure. So when when you look at Norman stuff, the arches ain't massive. They're not really tall, mat, mat, and wide. But then you get the idea of uh, introductions from um, France, mm. uh, where you get periods like uh, um, the decorated uh, architectural forms in the 1300s, where you've got these huge sort of arches and um, mm. and all the rest of it. So things change. It, it's depending on who who builds things. For example, um, you know, I've, I've built my little goat goat house in West Wales, and I'm really impressed with it. But um, I was actually I was actually um, I, I, I was actually, you know, I, I was trained to be a builder, not a carpenter. But but fortunately, I've, I've, I've worked out how to uh, make things in wood over the past few years. So it's just that idea of learning. Hmm. And, and, and Andy Pandy. He's never heard that before, have he? No, no questions, thank you. And what about you, Dave? No, no, fine, thanks. And I think Jess wants 30 seconds with you all, so go for it, Jess. No, it was good, but um, I've read a few things about um, that sort of particular topic. Um, there's a lot on the Archaeologia Cambrensis, especially in terms of Carl Leon. Um, it's very interesting, definitely. Thank you, Carl. My pleasure. OK, so what we'll do, we'll have a little bit of a break. We'll have a nice little bit of a break and we'll, we'll, we'll come back. I will I will um, put mute on the recording so I will so you guys can talk about your your Sa sandwiches. I'll go and feed me fish. You're going to feed your fish, all right then. <laughs> You're going to go and feed your fish. Yep. All right then. I I, I put that there. Feed fish. Feed fish. Oh, I got all white. Look at that. Weird feed fish. What? He's going to feed his fish. He's got a he's got a wonderful life he has. Has he got those koi carp? Has he got very expensive fish? Do you know what people are doing in Wales, right? They they they. Um, there, there's been fit. people. Have, people have got these estates and stuff, and and then they've been the fish have been growing so big that they've been dumping into lakes and all sorts of things. Mm. So um, you don't tell John because he'll go fishing and come over with a massive koi carp. <laughs> I can imagine it, can you? He's got this. It's all. Um, I got it. But John, do you know the colour of that fish? It's all gold, right? Do you realise it's not a pike? It's actually a coin. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can imagine it now. Giant fish. Right, let's have a break. Every, oh, so, often, every so often you see in the paper, giant uh, catfish has been caught. <laughs> Huge thing. And they're nearly always from the river Ebro in Spain. And you just wonder why are they? Why are all these huge yeah. catfish? What, what, in what's in the river? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there must be some kind of food source there that attracts yeah. them. I think. Mind you, we, my um, the lady lives downstairs. I've got koi carp in a little pond. Oh yeah. And one day, and one day I was looking out the window, and there was this heron. Uh, 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 <laughs> I mean, uh, having a good, having a good, f and then they kept coming back. The, you can see the heron out, out my window most yeah, evenings. Lovely. And they found these, and they they all meant so they've had to, um, you know, leave it a bit till the herons forgot, and uh, they've got some more. But uh, I say they haven't found well, it again they, they yet. Cost hundreds of pounds, apparently. Well, that's they? right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you don't want a heron gobbling them all up. No, no, I mean, they were having good stuff with these. I mean, it's expensive dinners, wasn't it, for the herons? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm. Anyway, I've gone for a drink, I think. Me too.
Did you say Stella had had Sandra had her um, a test? Is she will she have the result very quickly? I don't know. She said she's going to go tomorrow for the test. Oh, she's coming tomorrow. I rang her yesterday and she was going to come. She said, "Oh yeah, I feel fine. Yeah, I'll be coming." But today she rang me at five o'clock and said, "I can't stop coughing, so I won't come." Oh dear. Mm. She can. I mean, with with her vulnerability, she yeah. can really do without this, yeah, couldn't she? Is. Yeah, terrible. Let's let's hope it's just well, a cough. Let's hope so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, dear me. Mind you, I suppose. Yeah. In in her position, because she has to have treatment and things like that. Yeah. She can't shield. No. You know, no. if you shield it, you're going to hurt anybody, do you? And, and she could do with shielding. Well, yeah. But uh, mm. she can't really do it. It's an awful situation. Yeah, poor soul. Yeah. Mm. She's had no end of trouble with her, her, her breasts. Yeah. She's had both removed. Has she? Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. And she's had so this is a long, how, how long has she got, had been that trouble then? Well. It must have been a long time. More or less as long as I've known her. Because my mm. daughter was a breast care nurse. Mm -hmm. In the same clinic with uh, Sandra used to attend. Yeah. And uh, she's been going back and forth there for quite a long time. We went to a Christmas dinner with Carl. And that was about well, four four years ago or so. Mm -hmm. And it was the uh, Archaeology Cymru Christmas dinner. There was Carl and his family and me and, and, me, and uh, me and Sandra. That was it. <laughs> Yeah. But uh, my daughter turned around because uh, Sandra was in the clinic. Mm. My daughter turned to Sandra's daughter who taken her in and said, you know, he's, well, she, she's going to dinner with my dad tonight, don't you? <laughs> mm. <laughs> well, let's hope she gets a negative test. Find that. Let's hope so. I certainly yeah. hope so. Because he's still got this big operation to come. 
That's right. I mean, she's yeah. holding on, isn't she, with that, with the being cancelled and that, with yeah. I mean, to have the chemo and stuff to keep going. Yeah, yeah. sounds all mm. terrible disease. My husband oh, yeah. died of cancer. I mean, he was only forty-five. I mean, oh dear, oh, dear. no age, you know, and uh, yeah, that was it. You know, they always say heart disease is the biggest killer. Mm. But I know much more people have died of cancer, but then they say cancer's a lot of diseases, don't they, rather yeah. than one. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. I feel how lucky I am with that, the health that I've got. Yeah, yeah. Well, I do. I feel very fortunate. Mm. I mean, in some ways, I thought it'd be good to die at about 75 before all the <laughs> horrors of old age come. Mm. And here I am about 10 years later with <laughs> AIDS and cataracts and new knees. And, <laughs> yeah, I've got two new knees and I've had the cataracts removed, yeah. <laughs> the cataracts was great, actually. Well. Um, I didn't have cataracts. I had it done because I've got a glaucoma and they said it would Oh, right, yeah. But um, once they'd done them, I, I, can, I don't need glasses for driving or, you know, it's... No. Um, I only need them for well, reading. The same with me because yeah. I wore glasses all my life. Yeah. Until I had the cataracts then. Yeah, wonderful. And then my that. eyesight was so good. <laughs> I used to go uh, to drive up onto the mountains because yeah. th th what I could see then was amazing to me. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, I find it amazing. Sorry, I was walking on the beach today and said, so Don't you wear glasses? I don't need it when I'm outside. And, <laughs> you know, it's a, uh, yeah. Probably is I need glasses for reading now, and I didn't then. Well, that's right. Well, I do. These are very focal. Oh, right, now, right. these aren't. These are, these are a pair I had some while ago hmm. that are the right focus for using the computer. Yeah. So I had them just made for the computer. They're very cheap, you know, but they I can see better in. I've got a pair of fishing goggles with a little tiny reading lens right in the bottom of them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> For tying on the flies. <laughs> the <laughs> yeah. trouble is, when you're walking, if you look down... <laughs> yeah, you can't, yes. Well, I used to wear um, bifocals, which were just reading at one end and distance at the other. And lots of people reckon to have difficulty with them, and I never had difficulty with them. But I've got these very focals, and I have all sorts of problems with them. I can't cope with them very well. Mm. But the bifocals are no trouble. I, I could manage down the stairs with them. <laughs> I got some sage and onion. <laughs> this is this, oh, this is he don't like raining. that very much he's moaning <laughs> <laughs> this, this is this is queenie the female yeah. no she didn't like hearing about the sage and onion stuffing though <laughs> come on baldy go to bed come on <laughs> Very soon. And, uh, and a kestrel come and uh, perch in the garden this morning. Yeah. Beautiful sight. Just came yeah, in first yeah. on the uh, bird feeder. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. We get all sorts of things. There's a bird feeder out. You get, you know, the usual things that come. Yeah. Um, robins on the floor and yeah. tits and various things. The only thing, the only thing that was awful, a couple, I've seen this a couple of times, rats have, have, oh. have come and run up it, you know, that, that, oh, that, right. mm. the bit off putting that is, because the birds are lovely to see, but. Uh, oh, yes, yeah. The trouble is at the moment, I've got a family of magpies, the family of crows, <laughs> all coming to the garden. Mm. Clock. We're really ready to get going again. <laughs> I'm trying to find my drugs. I was
was watching a couple of pigeons in the back garden this afternoon. They were perched on the fence and um, uh, they were quite interesting, a male and a female pigeon. The male one kept getting things out of its feathers and feeding the female one. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, they were really cute. And then the male one jumped on the back of the female one. Uh, what, did the, what happened then, then? Uh, well, I don't know. It was very quick. <laughs> it was very quick. <laughs> and the female one fluttered off. And the male one was kind of fluffing his feathers out, looking quite pleased with himself. But they have quite a, 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 um, a palaver before the business. Oh, yes. The yeah. puffing of the chest and all that, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh, yes. but um, yeah, the way that the male one seemed to be feeding the female with things that it was finding in its feathers. Oh, right. It was, yeah. I thought they were just That's kissing. Amazing. Pardon? I thought they were just kissing. Well, no. <laughs> well, they looked as if they were, but in between, yes, the I, male was it definitely... It does look that way, doesn't it? ...little creatures out of its feathers. Yeah. <laughs> The gift to the it, yeah, it was really interesting to see. I think one of the loveliest caught things I saw was I saw a couple of swans once on a rather brackish little pond. Mm. We wouldn't have expected them there, and uh, they were dancing round each other. You know, oh. out of the water. On and, lake. It, pardon? Like it was yeah, lake. but it was on this grotty little pond at that. <laughs> doing it, you know, but it was beautiful to see. Yeah. Really, you know. Is it I true that, that they all... They I reckon all... that must have been a court. A court. Yeah. Well, yeah, they probably, they mate for life, yeah. don't yeah. they, swans? Pardon? Don't they mate for life, yeah. the swans? Yes, apparently. Yeah. Where's Andy gone? Probably gone to get his pudding. <laughs> Andy came to, to help me move a bed last night. He was very helpful. Okay. Yeah, it was a very heavy bed and I just need it to get it out of the room because I'm having a carpet put down. And he just happened to come by, so uh, he came in and, and helped me. He was a knight in shining armour. Yes. <laughs> and this, you're talking about Andy? Yeah. yeah. He's out polishing his halo, I think. <laughs> I think the thing is, <laughs> I I've, I've, heard, I've, listen for that. <laughs> I've heard Andy's a bit of rough. <laughs> He likes to think he is. <laughs> Andy, they're talking about you. Sorry, I had it switched off. What? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, right. So, Drina, Drina ain't here today. So, we're, 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 we're we'll put on a way thing. So, we got Margaret, we got Anne, we got Andy. Where Roger, he's always away. I think he's. I think he's got that bit of fluff. Mm. Uh, Claire gets tired. Peter, uh, but an apology and for oh, that's not bad, not bad, not bad at all. Good. Okay, let's let's get cracking. I won't be here next week, Carl. Oh, oh, tell us why. It's going to be interesting. Go on, tell us why. I'm going camping on Friday. To Plymouth. I'm going to what? Cork Castle. What? All by yourself? No, but my brother. Oh, that'll oh, be nice. boring, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> right. Straight down to it. Okay. Um, mm. Do you know, I've got to be honest with you, as as this is delivered, this is interesting, Matt. As this is, we, we, we were doing Skype um, a year and a bit ago, right? <laughs> and um, it was an absolute nightmare because everyone would be, I don't know, there'd be things going on in the background and stuff. And then 
and then we have the Zoom thing, and I had to turn everybody's mics off, and it's almost as if an etiquette has actually developed, but it's, mm. taken, a, it's taken a long time to get there. Um, and, I, and I appreciate that, and I think everyone appreciates it, really. <clears throat> I, I went, do you know what? I spoke for a whole hour and, and three minutes, and I don't think one of you interrupted me once. Now, mind you, is this fair? I wonder if John was involved, whether there'd been anybody interrupted. <laughs> anyway, let, let's get into it. Let, let's... I'm, I'm booked as a speaker in October. Oh, that's a long way off, isn't it? Yep. Well, actually, that's actually, the first one for the year. They've actually booked me, yeah. Well, actually, a physical talk. Yep, yeah, in, in my thing. Oh, well. I won't talk about that, Pete. I thought you were going to impress us with Cowbridge or something. Hang on a minute, Pete. You're not doing Bill's History Society, are you? I do. I've done them. All oh, right. Oh, okay. Okay, fair enough. Right, anyway, Lin back back to where we were. The Linvy History, Local History Society. The Linvy. Yeah, the Linvy. Yeah, done them. I bet they don't call you Pete the Meat, do they? No, they don't, no. <laughs> they call me Carl the Meat. I told you about that story, didn't I? But we're not going to go down that avenue. <laughs> I was banned. <laughs> Look, I was looking at some images beforehand and they were still on the computer. It was relevant to the lecture and we'll leave it there. <laughs> so we were talking about Colchester and... Um, I, I hope we're I hope we're getting the track now because this isn't just to talk about using bits of Roman stone here and there in a building. It's a talk. It's talk about real reuse and a real appreciation of the material around them at that time. I in fact have completely avoided York today because. York itself is a place that you guys have very recently visited. And I just thought York is a very complicated landscape. But Colchester is more straightforward to understand. And by this little plan here, I, I think Pete was, uh, Pete, uh, Pete was, um, we were, we were at the temple there, the castle um, and you can see the old outlines of the defences. That old actually, wall is still there, isn't it? That's the wall we walked around. Yeah. The, the, so, and, and actually, for, for, for Pete's knowledge, and actually this comes in quite nicely, so all I need to do is get the, the annotation bar in. I'm still, still trying to find my feet in this second half. That's Duncan Gate. That's the one we went to see, Pete. Yeah. Which is around there. Um, and again... A big chunk of the wall is still in existence, and you can clearly see that this is where uh, this is where the parking is along here as well. Uh, and you've got Saint Botoff's Gate. Um, and again, the one thing that I haven't mentioned and I'm not really going to attempt to grasp is that some of the templates of our towns in Britain, very few are still based on the original Roman templates. Um, one thing that we don't get a lot of in this country is actually the reuse of Roman names and, and places. Many of them haven't come through to us. And I, I just sort of indulged a bit. I just thought, right. So what, what you can clearly see is that um, you, can you can see the, the Roman template for the original temple there. Um, and there she is. You can see the outline um, and all this, all these gubbins in front. Some of them quite earlier. This, this was, this was an early church actually. Again, utilising the remains associated with the temple. And you can see, you can see one, one clear point. The reason why so much of the fabric of the castle which is our, uh, let me get the fabric of the castle here, is constructed out of Roman tile, 
is because look at all the look at all the tiles that we that this would have been the Roman city. Look at the there's, there's going to be hundreds and hundreds of tons of tiles that can be utilized in um, the construction of the castle. And I remember we also went out and about and we went searching for a theater as well. And we actually found the theater late at night, but we found a theater. But that, that's another story about Colchester for another day. So anyway, moving on again. Again, this is this is what we can see with the um, modern and uh, modern city itself. Uh, not the modern city, the 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 the, the Norman uh, rebuild, and I think this this interest in reconstruction is is showing how much of the um, how much of what would have been around in the period of the Normans, and you've got the theatre clearly indicated, and obviously the template of the um, temple is incorporated into the castle itself. So anyway, let's move on a little bit. And again, that's what we're seeing. And again, so much, so much of, of, of Colchester is that tile. Um, and again, this central focus of the temple. Now, back to what we're talking about. So in many ways, in many ways, what we do see, and, I, and I'm going gonna, gonna to use a little bit of a tick box thing. We've got lots of Roman remains in London still with us. Oh, hang on, one colour. Let's use a bit of a red. We've got lots of... Hang on, hang on. Let's do that. Hang on. Let's uh, not let me do it. Hang on, clear. Clear. Let's move. Let's move the font. Why is that not let me do that? Okay, move. No, we still got green. Hang on a minute. Let's, let's change that. Let's turn that off a minute, and we'll just do this. I need to get my little gubbins up there. Oh, right, nice. So what we've got, we've got, if you want to talk about where you see lots of Roman remains still used and utilised throughout the early medieval period and through um, into the medieval period and beyond, if we sort of, uh, we, we, we look at London, it's got it in green, which is a shame there. Hang on a minute, I'm, get, I'm getting a bit of a paddy a minute. Right, London, reuse of material. Lots in Colchester, reuse of material, rebuilding, structures utilising Roman remains. Again, Lincoln, Colchester, we've mentioned York, back to that. We've mentioned Exeter quite extensively. What we do see is that places don't that don't really utilise Roman material much is going to be the likes of um, Gloucester. There isn't much in the way of Roman Gloucester. Uh, there's a little bit in Carinion, but it's under the surface, not much of a reuse there. Um, we, we see quite spectacular reuse um, um, of Roman material in Leicester, for example, and quite a bit in Chester. Viraconium, although Viraconium is abandoned. Most of where I'm pointing the arrows are cities that were later reused as cities and, and urban centres. But there's one or two localities there that really didn't spring up into much of an importance after immediately after the Roman period, and, and one of those examples, a quite clear example, is we want to change that is this place here, Caliva Atrobatum, that was completely abandoned. But where we are going to go before the end is we're going to look still at Dover, and we're also going to look at the south coast as well with a site known as Porchester. So if we move on a little bit and we go on and we look at this, this is the site that is, is the epitome of everything that I've been trying to say and show you. This is Brixworth Church. Um, and look at that. Brixworth Church in Northamptonshire. Now, everything there is Roman. Everything. Everything there is Roman. And the, the, what... What happened, what we do know at Brixworth, and, I, and I've repeated this a number of times, what we do know at Brixworth is that Brixworth was a mother church in Northamptonshire, right? So we got um, um, south, we, we got uh, central, central east um, England. And Brixworth <laughs> itself is one of those sites that they, they analysed all these tiles and they analysed all the bricks. And they realised that some of the bricks and tiles... Um, 
are on one side of the church and then above it there's other bricks and tiles from another site and then in the tower there's other material and if you look at all this it's a real hodgepodge of rebuilt materials and what we do believe <clears> happened <throat> at Bricksworth was that somebody said right we're gonna we're gonna have Bricksworth of the Minster Church and all the par parishes from the local area were told right you've got to bring a load of material from your carts in and we've got material being used at Bricksworth from from a radius of about, about 10 miles and people people were told right we need material now, to get the material, they would have had to have readily demolished existing Roman buildings. So in the Anglo-Saxon period, that was very, very useful to go to where old Roman villas were, old towns, and just bring all that tile, just bring all the stuff in, wheelbarrow, wheelbarrows and carts and wagons, bring it all to this site. Um, in other words, lots of parishes made a contribution for the for the construction of this Minster Church. <coughs> Minster Church is actually a, a mother church, a centralised church, a main church. And all the little individual parishes from a radio of about 10 miles would bring their material to be used. And happened, it happened to be the readily quarryable material was actually from Roman buildings. So they brought brought all this material to the church. Uh, and you can you can quickly you can quickly see, look at that, that um, the the archaeologists from Leicester University basically started to see well look at that stone there it's a very different colour from this stone, and obviously we've got all these all these tiles that um, and in, in in you know definitely from different buildings, and I, I I used to have this plan which I'd probably find one day and we could actually revisit this church so they actually found that one part of the church was actually built using burnt stone. And they started to analyze the stone and the stone actually came from a specific Roman site. So that, that stone from a specific Roman site, that building had been burnt down at one stage, but they put it all in the cat, um, wagons. And basically this is what we're seeing. So when you're looking for a building <laughs> that is old, you look for this type of structure. You look for, um, um, it's so cosmopolitan, it's likely that they took material from up to 10 different Roman localities, ex-Roman buildings, to actually construct this at Bricksworth. Carl? Yeah, go on. Looking at the amount of material, of Roman material that's used in these buildings and is brought over, most of it would have had to have been manufactured locally. Mm. By the Romans, but locally. Because transporting all that material from uh, from wherever, it's almost amazing. It, it is. It is. Um, Pete, I, I think. I, I think. Let, let's take. Etc. Yeah. Let's 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 take let's take to task what you've just said. The reason why you reuse a material and the reason why you build a locality somewhere is that, is is there's. Hang on a minute. The turkey's just jumped on the table. Hang on. <laughs> oh, you can't go there. But there's so much of it, but the, all the Roman tiles that they used <coughs> must be manufactured locally. Well, right, back to what I said. Right, sorry yeah. for that. But back to what I said. Right, so the one, the one reason for citing a locality is because there's building material around. Mm -hmm. So you think, right, there's, there's nothing in this field, but there, over there, there's, there's building material. So we're going to build our building over there, right? The difference with Bricksworth, there was already existing material on the site to build Bricksworth. But because Bricksworth was a minster church, a mother church, this was the place that they were going to site the church. And then the, the parishes around for a 10 mile radius were told, right, you bring material to the mother church. And they, they, they got whatever was available and brought it to this church. And that's how they built it. Yes, it's all locally made material, but it's the locally made material to those parishes. And this is the material they're bringing in. None of this material comes more than beyond the 10 mile uh, radius. And, and actually, th th there's one key to this church. This church was much bigger once. The, these, um, the, again, this is a completely different lecture and I'm not keyed into doing that lecture today because <coughs> I haven't got all the material I need. Uh, this itself was an arcade 
And actually, there was more of the church out here. So it, it actually it actually came out here. There was much more of the church. So in other words, the material that you're actually seeing is probably only two thirds of what originally existed from the original ground plan of the site. So there was a lot more Roman material brought into the seat. So it's act, it's it's amazing, Pete, what you're seeing, but there was a lot more. Okay. There was a lot, lot more than this, and um, yes, it's 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 amazing. But you can clearly see the the lots of points that I'm trying to make. But, but the big point is, if you're going to challenge an archaeologist and historian and say you're wrong, you've got to be able to say you're wrong based on the fact this is a very old church because there's a lot of material being used in it, and a lot of effort has gone into this. And the other point as well, Pete. Before archaeologists start to look at this, Pete, is that for a church like this to be constructed, this must have been a Roman city. Yeah. Mm. And that was the clue. There was, enough, there was a little bit of material to build a little bit of it, Pete. <clears throat> but they needed to get those parishes and communities in. This, this church was loved. And it was so important that they moved that material from a 10-mile radius. Um, and because of all the dating techniques and the comparison that we've got, we, we were able to to do this. And actually, it was my university at Leicester, that, uh, my first university that was actually did the work on this. This would I know I've done this before. and It would be another another nice little look again in, in, in the future, maybe. Right. Anyway, very aware of time. Now. This is the thing. I, I mentioned at the beginning that there were lots of gate, that there were lots of town walls and lots of gateways. Um, and again, the reuse of Roman building material, but the reuse of Roman building material, it was already there. This, this is known as the Newport Gate in Lincoln. And this, this is probably the finest um, what's left of a dual gateway Anywhere in Britain still, uh, there would have been a, originally there would have been another gate here, um, which was for vehicular traffic. There was this gate and you had pedestrians. So there was another pedestrian gateway over here. So this isn't this isn't all there. And and this is actually quite this has actually suffered quite a lot because over the years, lorries, lorries have got trapped in here, been stupid enough to think, right, and they, they've actually got trapped in here. But what are we talking about here? We, we're, we're, we're talking about the reuse of the Roman idea, the, 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 the idealism of Rome. It's a gateway. We're going to continue to use it as a gateway, and it's going to be used as a gateway for the next 1,900 years. So this is basically more or less the original fabric as it was built. And it looks quite simple. And that, that's that's the other thing as well is it's not broken. It's got a use. And actually one of the little distractive thing as well. I think, I've yeah, can you see that there? This is, um, you can actually see that the ground level is a lot lower, um, is a lot higher, I mean. Um, and that guy is is standing there. So obviously there's a lot more of this gateway. But now they've removed that gate, that building to the left, which in a way sort of exposes this um, site to a little bit more erosion. Um, it, again, it's a shame we don't have many more gateways in Britain surviving from the Roman period. And again, the idea of reuse. Uh, what I'm trying to get at is that when you there, there used to be the great tower in, in Chester, this great gateway in Chester, which was demolished in the 17. Not Chester, Exeter, which was demolished in the 1750s. And there were more gateways in the likes of London and there were more gateways in the likes of uh, York that were actually from the Roman period. But because they were widening the roads, they, they had to get rid of the gateways. Um, one other thing about those gateways is that um, they, they were, they were re refurbished. Up until the 1700s, they were refurbished. So what you had above... The gateway itself, you may have had accommodation, you may have had, you may have had a shop, you may have had various different things, but all that world went with all those major revolutionary changes in the Industrial Revolution from the 1750s onwards. Mm. Now, 
I I was um, when I was um, when I was doing an Ealing film in London quite quite a few years ago for um, for a film called Architecton. I I I was I was um, I, I was staying in in a part of London and I got off the um, off, off the tube and I went around the corner and I thought bloody hell is a Roman wall um, and this is um, I, I got my, I get my Roman walls mixed up all the time right so but this one was was basically behind the tube station and I just that's amazing and actually again the Roman wall being used as a wall that would be used as a defensive wall went into the medieval period into the early medieval period into the five six hundreds and then into the medieval period and continued as a wall um it, 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 it this wall the intro the thing is what survived the great fire of london in in 1666 was actually the roman wall because it was made of stone everything else went up in flames and i think that um that that that's one of the key things but there is something that I haven't told you through most of the lecture. I've indicated only slightly. It may come as a surprise to you all that because we're sort of in primary Roman civilization in Britain, what I mean by that is AD 43, right? The Romans come over here and they start building walls and they start building structures and, um, stone and then timber structures and then um, um, composite buildings and so on, right? The, Ro the, Roman, the Romans as a civilized idea are only used for 400 years. So most of the buildings that they could have developed, like the great um, um, uh, um, Pantheon in, in Rome itself and the um, great aqueducts and stone aqueducts that we see throughout the um, Roman Empire, they, they, those, um, those weren't built because the Roman civilization had been going in Europe for hundreds of years before the Romans ever came over here. And it, it, it endured longer as well. So there's a lot, there were a lot less stone buildings from the Roman period in Britain anyway. So the ones that do survive, which are very scant, and the ones that are reused and then reused of building Roman material is a lot more limited than on the continent, whether they were demolished or not. Now, this is rather interesting. This is actually by the uh, London Museum. And you can see here that there's there's a lot of material that's fairly modern. But if we this is by the London Museum, not the British Museum, as we look down on it. Actually, lots of the outer casing is, in fact, um, a, a Roman itself, except for the upper floors, are actually more. Hang on, the upper floors are more modern um, and the inner workings have all been faced and bricked with modern stone. So this is this is by this is by the London Museum and London Museum, a bit of Roman wall. That's great. And that that's the thing. Again, um, Roman Roman walls being reused, reutilized, refurbished. Um, and those are the main survivors, what we do see across um, um, the old uh, Roman Britain. And the one thing about the great survivors of Roman walls in Britain are those great eastern shore forts and the likes of the great wall that survived at Caerwent in localities that were massively occupied by people. Uh, after the Roman period. So therefore, the walls were abandoned and they were just left without any looting. And in fact, in many ways, Hadrian's Wall had survived lots of the looting <laughs> until people chose to take away the stone for the construction of the roads that were required for quelling any future rebellion in Scotland after the Jacobites in 1746. Right. I do believe I am coming to the end of my slides, but what I have come is to the end of, of that load of slides. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring in the next slides. Right, so I'm just going to chuck on this here. So we've already seen that one. Are you seeing a slide of... No. Uh, hang on, we do... Hang on, it's all gone backwards a minute. Hang on, do, 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 do. 
Right, good. What are you seeing now, Pete? Uh, nothing, just everybody's facing you. Everybody's facing you. There's a sound. I tell you what, I tell you what, if, uh, you know, not to embarrass Claire, she looked quite sexy like that. <laughs> so, uh, Margaret's jealous now. Je Margaret, you'll have to do that next week for us. What? I can't see Claire. Uh, all right, all right, then. There. There's Claire. <laughs> oh, my word. <laughs> what a beast. <laughs> 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 what the what's that supposed to mean a sexy beast <laughs> God, I, 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 I don't know I'd take now the wrong way anyway so Pete, <laughs> Pete where are we now come on Pete you must know where this is come on Pete come on I'm not sure come on Pete it looks like Edinburgh no oh Dover yes Dover Castle, I've been Dover there, yeah. Castle, yeah, Dover Castle. Now, interestingly enough, Dover Castle has been the place of defiance against Napoleon and the, the place of defiance against the um, against the Germans in the First World War and the place that would be the last redoubt before the Germans had invaded in the Second World War. It was all honeycombed with... Um, uh, with everything, right? The Germans would have taken a while to capture this. However, interestingly enough, would the Germans have cared about that structure? Mm. Because that is a wonderful, uh, the second tallest structure there after the, the, the tower behind. This is actually a Roman lighthouse. This is the Roman lighthouse at Dover. Now, I, this is this to me is fascinating, mm. and I was going to actually I was going to actually do a little bit more um, more on this today, but I thought right it, the time would get on, which it has, and I'd probably get too over enthusiastic. But when, when you when you look about it, the close proximation between that tower and the church, um, with within this sort of landscape, and you're thinking, you know. You can see over to France there, right? And this tower itself is the tallest standing Roman structure surviving anywhere in Britain. And, and very few people um, go to talk about it. And what I'm going to do, I, I, I actually thought I had another image of it there. So I'm going to, I'm going to actually, um, I'm going to actually find another one in a minute. I thought I had another image. So I'm just going to chuck this on one. Uh, Dover um, Lighthouse, right, Roman Lighthouse. It's actually looked after by the National Trust. And if we go, oh, this, this, this is a really good one, right? And, hang on, oh, that's a bit distorted. Yeah, mm -hmm. this, this one, it, it gives a bit of nakedness. We'll show you this one now, hang on. Um, and you, you'll, 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 see, you'll see something else which we've been talking about as well. Um, new share. Bingo. Doesn't she look proud? Ooh. Do you know you 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 you're seeing a little doorway there, and you got the window and the window and the window. Obviously, and and this this is this, there's another point to be made here. Um, a little bit of a distorted angle, a, a curveball. What this is, you've obviously got the Roman fabric. And you know that because you've got the Roman string courses all the way up. There you go, the Roman tile. And let, let, let's get this right. Let's let's get something right. The tiles for Roman buildings were deliberately made to um, to actually go through the the width of the wall. So a, a meter and a half wall, two meter thick wall. They, they they would have had these big tiles several of them through the wall to create um, a, a sandwich, right, which was a string course, right? And then what you would find is then between that, this, you would then have the other dress stone. Uh, and then between that dress stone, there'd be a core of, of loose rubble, and then you'd have an internal um, dressed series of stones, which we'll have a quick look at or another site before the end. Um, but I think what's really interesting is that they've done their best to continually um, 
sort of um, retain this site. It's patched up. I, I think the patches on this would be great to look at. When this was patched up, all all different periods, you know, we're talking about Brinksworth, it's all Roman, right? Um, a Roman material, Brinksworth, right? And that's another point. And there's another point to be made here, another, another interesting point. Um, so you're looking at this, you're thinking, right, okay, you can tell this is bloody old because it, there's loads of different bits of mil building material, right? But the core of the structure, when the Romans originally built this, they, they used two types of material, the brick and they used the stone. But naturally, it's had to be patched up. So in other words, you're just using two materials throughout, but because it's had to be patched up, again, that gives you an idea of age. When anything else is added in to block it up, it gives you an idea of age. And that gives it a sense of architectural, stratigraphic context. I love this one. It's, it's cute. Right, so what we're going to do, we're, gonna, we're now going to go on to um, the other images. So we're going to just sort of, See where we go, and we'll probably finish in ten minutes if you if you don't mind, folks. So, good. so I, I will have given my best. So here we go. Next. So here we go. Next. So we got that Dover there. Let's move on. This is Porchester. Now, interesting enough, Porchester. Uh, when the Normans came over and they said, oh. right, they said, okay, um, what we've got, we've got this, um, we've got this Roman fort. This is as poor Chester would have looked like in the Roman period. It would have had its own little harbourage, right? But as time went by, the site was abandoned into about 450. It would have been abandoned. The Normans come over and what they do, they take a corner of it. And if we get this right, they get take a corner of it and they go over here and they build a keep, retaining this wall. But slowly but surely, the coastline is is advancing inland right so when if we if we move on again and we go back to that and i do believe we go back to that there the coast is getting a bit closer and then you've got this where where it's almost as if the roman stuff is is maintained you know in keeping with the joneses we'll retain it it's okay the ditches ain't really retained the, you know and that's what's going on and this is what it looks like today so um, it's great because what the what what happened is that the the Normans simply had these defences. They said, "Okay, right, we've got the we've got the towers, we've got the wall, Roman, yeah, good, excellent, yeah." But what we're going to do? We're going to we're going to chuck in a we're going to chuck in a um, castle. But this 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 goes against the grain. Now, this is a really interesting one. To build that castle, they're going to have to get the Roman built. No, that again. <laughs> get that out. To build a castle, they're going to have to quarry new material or bring new material in from elsewhere. Because if they use the walls of the Roman site, the walls of the Roman site would disappear. So you wouldn't have the walls around the outside. So you've got to bring in new. This is this goes against the grain. They've had to bring in new material for building that castle in the Norman period so that they could retain the existing Roman um, context the existing Roman walls, um, and there it is. So um, it's done pretty well as a Roman site. I got to be honest with you. Uh, that that tower is just about just about to fall into the sea, right? But these walls are retaining the graveyard, and naturally, I would probably feel that maybe maybe bits of the church have been constructed out of Roman material that may have been quarried from this ditch. Um, but the main and can you see what I was saying about this Norman keep? Can you see that most of the material looks like it's come from one quarry? So obviously that would indicate this later it's, it's Norman. And it would also indicate that they used very little of the Roman material to build that keep. Because if they had, these walls would have ceased to exist. Very interesting point there. There's slight, there's slight exceptions to the rule occasionally. And Peter, where is this, my darling, my love? That I, I, I would say is still the entrance to Dover, isn't it? No, come on, oh. Pete. Come on, I'll give you another clue, Pete. No, I'm not sure. Come on. Oh, Cardiff. Yes. All oh, right. Okay. Now this is this is the North Gateway for um, Cardiff oh. Castle. 
Oh, and interestingly enough, that. the architect, what, what happened was that um, th this bank was still all the way across here, right? Um, and the architect, William Burgess, was commissioned by the third Marquis of Butte in 1877. And he said, um, what, what, what's this? What, what is all this stuff, right? Um, and, and the third Marquis of Butte said, I'll dig into it, right? Oh, that, we're, back to, we're back to Port Chester. He said, we'll dig into it, right? And what it turned out was that the original footings of the Roman wall still remained. So the, the, the Marquis of Butte, um, um, William Burgess said to the Marquis of Butte, what we'll do, right, we will excavate the Roman walls down to the level of the Roman walls. This is Roman, all the like the stuff, that's Roman there. And what we'll do, we'll outline it with red rather sandstone and we'll rebuild it. We'll rebuild the whole thing to sort of replicate a Roman site. And that, that's really interesting because... Lots of the Roman building material had been nicked, but there was still enough there to work out the template of the Roman fort at Cardiff Castle. Um, and that's why the reason why the, the reason why they built that castle where it is within the walls of the old Roman fort was because people were so hostile towards uh, the Norman, the Normans coming into Wales in the uh, 1090s and i tell you what the other the other thing the other woman of my life is actually a chunk of roman wall there is actually to be found a cardiff castle that you can rub up to and you can kiss it yeah and the wall is this one yeah do that. die a thousand deaths this is a holy grail to me and nobody shall touch her <laughs> this is actually the very late Roman wall at Cardiff, and it is so lush, and it's untouched, and it was protected by the earth. It was protected by the very earth that was abutted on the wall, and that's how it is. That's how it's been, and that, to me, is lush, and that's been there for 1,700 years. And I tell you what, Margaret, right? You would love to touch that and get your hands on it, right? It, it looks like fresh mortar in between the stones. It does. It does. This is what's <clears> so <throat> great about it. It's still there. It's not been mucked around with. Ooh, so that's original too. It's virgin. <laughs> it, you know, I, I gotta be honest with you. Yeah, it's it's so amazing. Look at that. And, right. I, and, and uh, I tell you what, it is stunning because the way that that's still there, every single stone there and the mortar, was yeah. it what, what happened? They, they, it was probably rendered and then yeah. the earth built up on the inside. And what happens is that you, you get, you get uh, three metres of wall still, um, nearly a two metre thick wall. And on the outside, this is the outside. What happened was this is on the inside and what happened is that over the years, um, people took the face, facing stone on the outside, mm -hmm. right? This is why the outside mm -hmm. looks very worn, mm -hmm. but that looks so fresh. It is so amazing. Mm -hmm. it's amazing, that is. But I tell you what, if, if, I, if, if, um, if I, I was ever to do a, um, a talk at Cardiff Castle, right, I'd probably spend half an hour just <laughs> kissing this wall, right? It, it, it would be... This, 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 this is, but my, my one love is obviously Michelle um, mm -hmm. and obviously my children. And then, but then my other love is the city of York. And this has got to be another one of my love, right? Oh, and Jess says I have free access to Cardiff Castle all year round, bitch. Uh, for living in Cardiff. And this is by far my favorite part of the castle. I love touching it. I hate you, Jess. And closing my eyes and imagining what that wall would have seen through the ages. Lucky <laughs> so for living in Cardiff. Shut up! <laughs> Everyone hates you, and Margaret does. Oh, we love you, Ruth. <laughs> so again, that's that, and and you see this from the outside. And to be honest with you, right? <clears throat> Amazingly enough, that's the end of the lecture. So there you go. Um, 
So um, I didn't think that was the last slide, but it is. But th there you go. And um, and the reason why I remember this ver verbatim um, looking at this is because I was a guide Friday guide and um, and we would stop out there and it would always be this was found under the excavations and direction of William Burgess, the architect for the third Marquis of Butte. And this was uncovered in 1877. Next, we will see a man walking naked down the street as part of the festival of nudeness. <laughs> On that note, let's call it a day. Do you know what, right? Um, i got to be honest with you. Me, me and Pete have been ch talking about this in depth. We, we saw, um, will, will you all sponsor me and Pete to walk through the streets of Cardiff naked? Um, any, any sponsors? Margaret's into that one. And we'll send you photographs from the prison cell. Yeah, we need proof. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, we'll, uh, it'll be in the newspapers. <laughs> and they'll, they'll, they'll be Bear Bum Pete <laughs> and Carla Meat. See what I did there? Anyway, Pete, anything you'd like to say? Um, <laughs> no, it's about just that we know that the Romans actually fired bricks and fired the, the, the tiles. And they were actually made from clay and fired. We know that. Yes. And uh, so they, and I think they must have helped use a lot of local labor to help to manufacture the quantities that they made. Yes. Uh, and and uh, actually, this is the point, the quantities they're using more brick than any other material. And yeah. um, particularly when you look at cities like um, Chichester, where you've got a soft rock and you're going to be reliant on a lot of um, construction using um, brick. Um, the basin where there was plenty of plenty of clay. Plenty of clay along the coast, exactly. Yeah. River estuarine areas and so on, exactly. One little, other little story. When we were at Colchester, me and Chris were walking around the wall and there was two other people there, not of our group, entirely separate to us. And they heard me chatting to Chris and said, oh, you you sound like Cornish. I said, well, yes, I am. Oh, we're, what part? I said, Port Levin. Oh, we had our honeymoon in Port Levin. I said, oh, what, what hotel? We had it in our house, which is my mother's and father's house. Oh. In our house. They had their honeymoon in our house. And we're walking around <laughs> Colchester Wall. Just amazing just how small this yeah. world is. Yeah, really. Hey, can I ask you a question? Were you that little boy who used to peer peer through the little um, keyhole to see what they were doing? <laughs> oh, no, not particularly, no. Yeah, I reckon he was. But anyway, John would have definitely been. So, um, talking about Anne, well, anything you'd like to say, Anne? No, except... This it seems so. Um, what can I say? You, you brought us so many examples. I feel I ought to keep my eyes open in future. <laughs> it's in a in a way that I've never really known much. Well, I still don't know much about apart from what I've learned from you about archaeology. But yes, it. Uh, I, and I think I have. I've seen odd, you know, bits of. Well, I know I have when I've been in some. Uh, historic place, but no, it kind of makes it sort of intimate to Britain. Yes, yeah, there's a there is a different type of intimacy where we yeah. where we can't afford to take things for granted when you do on the yeah. continent. Yeah, you know, it, it it is it is that type of thing. Um, you know, you've got the Pont de Gare and you think, oh my God, how does that compare with the Dover Lighthouse, you lucky <laughs> bastards? But but then you think of, of, of what survived and you think, actually, we're, we're, we're okay with Raven's Glass, you know, that, that, that'll that be okay. We're okay with Hard Knot. We, we're, we're okay with that. Forget about Ambleside, that's just a fail. <laughs> but, you know, it's just, just that, you know, we do have these little things out there. And the, mm, the, yeah. the Thamir in Leicestershire, the, this huge, massive wall in Leicestershire, it really... It really does something. And, and also, I would like to mention, as 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 before, obviously, well, we'll um, we're actually going to be starting um, a Thursday evening, um, looking at the archaeology of Orkney, and and a certain Carl James Langford will be teaching it. So I've been brought out of semi-retirement to do that on a Thursday evening coming up. So you know, we've got different areas that we'll be looking at as well. And on a Wednesday evening, I'll be solely looking at Welsh history. So there you go. Um, right. So I 
So, right, let's see if there's any other questions from the likes of, uh, what's his name now? Um, David. Hello. Fine, that's grand. Thank you, Carl. Uh, I, do you know what? I love that. It's grand. <laughs> I haven't had that for ages. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. Um, do, do, uh, what about you, Maglet? Uh, these uh, buildings that they they built on the coast, like uh, Porchester, uh, did they construct um, sewage pipes that went out to sea? And if so, do any still exist? And were they built of brick or lead? Do you know? We've got no archaeological evidence of any any structures like that in Britain, but they would have been on the continent. No, no, no big. But I would say I would say one thing that um, interesting enough, um, when they were excavating a clay in a few years ago, um, they actually found um, a still operational culvert, a Roman line culvert, because mm. uh, they put this um, iodine in it and it actually come out on the main river. Okay. So there, there are some. Uh, that that was obviously you could say as a sewage outlet, but that that was still operational. Mm. So and you've got operational sewers in Exeter, mm. and you've got operational sewers in York, and some of the operational sewers in uh, in London, and you've got probably other local localities like uh, Carinian, uh, Sirencester, and Lincoln that probably have still operational sewage system. We actually, we don't know where all the sewage systems are in Britain built by the Victorians. So we're buggered if we're going to know all of the Roman ones. So there are, so it might be, if, for example, actually, no, I'm completely wrong in your answer. The great drain at York drains directly into the River Avon. Yeah. I'd so yeah. They're, they're, they didn't have them going out to sea, seeing as they were so close. Yeah, but not, not, not out to sea, but yeah, we got half, half that answer, yeah, so. Clara Bray had a sewer as well, if you remember. They showed us a sewer at the start. Yes, they did. They did. They did. They, I, I, I think at that point you tried to stuff me down it, Pete, but you think <laughs> we were... Well, yes, but yeah. Bronnie was small enough to chuck her down there, uh, but she wasn't being annoying. Uh, what about you, Andy? No, that's that's fine, thank you. I've, uh, I'm always intrigued at architecture <coughs> when it's been reused and things and wondering where it's come from and things. Mm. Yeah, Sen well, that's sensible process, really, isn't it? So. Yeah, in, yeah, it is. In two weeks, we'll be looking at uh, the Anglo Saxons and the reuse of their material. Right. So, um, right. What about you? Uh, I think I think we got Claire and something quick from Jess. <clears throat> uh, thank you for the lecture. It um, reminded me of where I lived in Germany. I live now far from the Lines Museum, a big wow. um, Roman area. Yes. Yes, very, very, very much so. Very much so. Um, and Yugoslavia next week, by the way, old Yugoslavia. But um, and then we'll be coming back to the Anglo-Saxons after that. We've never done the Balkans before. Um, Jessica, anything you'd like to say? No, it's really good. It's definitely something that I'm interested in, especially with how uh, the medieval period reused uh Roman sites um that Julia Velva book really goes into that as well so it's something that I've really focused on in the past couple of weeks especially in terms of my dissertation you have to tell us more about that I wonder if yeah. the Romans ever got cholera because they were really good with their waterworks and everything and safety. yes they yes they did there were outbreaks of cholera were in, there? yeah they were they were our, our waterborne diseases definitely yeah yeah uh, th th this was one of the problems with places like London. Uh, the the the, um, the system started to fail. Uh -huh. um, all 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 hygiene systems fail eventually. You know you can get Legionnaires' disease in a hospital. You know if you can get Legionnaires' disease in a hosp modern hospital, you know it's 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 it stands to make sense. Was this when the Romans left and they didn't kind of keep up with it? Oh no no in the Roman period itself. No this is what I'm talking about. That that's the example. You can get legionnaires disease in a modern hospital. So how how are we going to maintain these water systems in a Roman city? You know it's not possible. Yeah. You're going to your things are going to stick. Things are going to happen. There's going to be really hot months where there's no water flowing. Mm. Um you know these things are going to happen. So mm. so um Okay, then. Well, I'm going to, um, I think that's it for tonight now. Thank you very much. You know, so hopefully see you all next week, except for Claire, because she's going camping with a bloke. Ooh. A, a brother, a actually. Brother. A brother, yeah. <laughs> We're still a bloke. Still a bloke. Uh, anyone want to ask any questions before we call it a night? No? No. Nope. 
No, thank you. Good Carl. night. Okay. Good My night. pleasure. Good I'm night. gonna say good night to Dave before he goes. Good night, Dave. Good night. Good night. Nasta. Nasta. Uh, 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 um, Gwalochi, um, Deeth Mecha. Stop showing off. No, Deeth <laughs> Deeth Maur, Deeth Maur. Dim 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 Deeth Mercha on Wednesday. No, that's Cornish as well. Deeth Lean Monday. Deeth Yai Deeth Gwena Thursday Friday. Mm. Right. So, uh, yeah, I can't get rid of you. Oh, they're all gone. They oh, love you talking Welsh, Carl. Uh, I know. Um, Anne loves me talking Welsh. You see, she loves it. <laughs> It's so Richard Burton, the 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 display in a national museum of Wales. Really. Anyway, <laughs> anyways, see you, Anne. Right, okay, Claire, Claire, Claire. It's Jane, 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 Jane. Mm. Oh, Jane, my Jane. Right. I'd have to go in a minute, but anything you want to say on the record or off the record? Um, no, everything's fine. Um, could you just send over some of the photos, to, or send them all over to me, and I'll. Uh... I'll tell you what I'll do it now. Because it would be a pain in the bottom if I said, I'll oh, send this particular one and send that one. <laughs> um, Carl, just a quick question. I know it's going to sound really blonde of me. Yeah, it probably um, is. Go on. <laughs> How hey, you hey, can, you, can you just bear with me a second? Yeah, no, that's fine. Stay there. Stay there. I've got to do something. I haven't done for my stepdaughter. Hi, are you still there? Yes, I am. My right, arm got long. I got, I got a crack. No, that's fine. Yeah, um, go on. Basically, I'm trying to get hold of uh, um, an excavation report in the Glamorgan. Gwent Archaeological Trust in their annual report. Would I have to contact them directly um, to get hold of it? 
We what what year are we talking about? Um, I'll show you now. Is it? It's mostly the Cosmaston. Um, oh, we got it all. Oh, have you? We we got most of their reports. Um, we've got most of their um the stuff you would the, the stuff you won't be able to get hold of. We got we we used to be, I used to be a member of the Glamorgan Great Archaeological Trust in the nineteen eighties when most of the Cosmaston stuff was done. So we got the original yeah. plans. We got all that in books. Oh, that's fine because I've literally been scouring the internet. No, you're not going to get it. I wouldn't even bother. We got we got most most of the original. We we've actually got some original source material that I nicked. Oh, <laughs> I love it, Carl. Absolutely. Love it. <laughs> that, 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 that's like, that's live online as well. You got you got to have a, a souvenir. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah, no, that's fine. That's all I was asking, really, because I I've just been having nightmares with with them, just having things just not online it's just driving me up the wall yeah don't worry about it it's the usual thing yeah no that's fine as long as i've got um th that i know where to look yes my letter will be fine because he just wanted me to have 10 sites which i do have um but i i sometimes like to look at the uh, report before i write them down but the fact that i have you on my side has helped massively so thank you so much carl thank you uh, uh, yeah, Jesus, Jesus just lets me, and he, he, he knows I'm I'm always right. Yeah, he hates me, and that's why he's making everything so hard for me. <laughs> See, if you turn to Jesus, everything would be all right. Oh, unfortunately, I don't think he'd accept me anyway. Why not? My child's born out of wedlock. <gasps> that's terrible. I know. You know, you know that was one of the, that was one of the stipulations of working for us. You had to be born in wedlock. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I've been. I've got quite a few. Um, I had a book given to me the other day, which would be quite good for the Welsh uh, medieval classes as well. In terms of, okay. um, it was it was quite a refreshing book to read. It was medieval Wales, but it's looking at the political stability of Wales. And I was reflecting that in terms of the archaeology. So, uh, yeah, that, excited to uh, flex that a little bit, Carl, as well, in the Welsh history. No, that's good. So I tell you what, when, 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 you got, when we got the, uh, uh, yes, it, we, mo most, most, of the stuff, most of the stuff that we've had don donated, I can remember we had a complete series of um, Council of British Archaeology annual reports going back to day one. Mm. Got all their stuff, every single excavation up until about, I don't know, 2015 or something. Yeah, no, that's cool. Thank you so much, Carl. You, you've been such a big help. Well, you can't not be a big help, can you? It's got to be done. Anyway, so, uh, no, it's fine. It's cool. So, all right, then, I'm going to, well, keep doing your thing and we'll see you tomorrow. And, um, yes, see you tomorrow, Carl. Um, and keep remembering, Jesus, Jesus does love you, really, but it might be another one. <laughs> a different type of Jesus. Yeah. Uh, I'm not all for Christianity anyway. The, the one that Phil Collins sings about. <laughs> yeah, we won't go there. <laughs> anyway, Carl, I'll take care. I'll speak to you tomorrow. Speak to you tomorrow. Um, thanks for joining us. Keep being awesome. I'll see you then. And you. Ta ra. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Anyway, thanks for watching us on YouTube and um, obviously uh, much, much more tidy up in the background and uh, soon. Anyway, take care. Thanks for joining us. Okay.